is Brittany Chavez with Beautifully Connected. Welcome to Say No to Pitocin. I have done previous videos talking about Pitocin. I hate it. I'm not impartial. I don't like it. I think it's dangerous in a lot of cases. And I am back today to give you some scientific resources to back up some of my claims. Um, at the end of this video, there will be a resource slide for you. And I will also link all of the resources in the description below. So thank you very much and remember to share this information with your friends if you find it useful. Um, so again, this is Say No to Pitocin, a small presentation for expecting families and for parents. Um, I want to give you the resources and information about what Pitocin is and why I think you should avoid it. So what is Pitocin, right? Pitocin is a drug that's used to induce and to augment labor. Um, augment labor, it means speed it up a little bit. So oftentimes it's given in the hospital to make the process go a little quicker. So for a long time, Pitocin has been used and oh, you know, people have thought that it doesn't really affect uh, maternal, you know, moms after they have their babies. Um, it's been thought that it doesn't affect babies, um, but really those are just hypotheses. This has never been studied for long-term effects and long-term consequences. So we're using this drug often and it's never been studied for long-term effects. So how do we know that it's safe? The most recent statistics I could find on induction showed on the CDC website that um, for 2010, the rate of induction in America was 23.8%, which was about a 50% increase from 1990. So of course now it's 2020 and I'm waiting for those new statistics to be compiled. Um, I will hypothesize that the rate of induction has probably gone up a little bit. I see inductions a lot, especially in Oklahoma. Um, and then I found the statistics for people who we be given Pitocin during labor, and that rate was 50, 50 to 57 percent, um, depending on the study. So that means um, combined between induction and augmentation of labor, 57 percent of people who go to an American hospital to give birth will receive Pitocin. So this is a large amount, right? Um, half of us, half of us who go into labor in an American hospital will be given Pitocin. So we, we should know about this drug and we should study it a little bit more to see, you know, what are the effects of using this and is it really safe? Um, so what is Pitocin, right? Um, I've heard a lot of times medical professionals, doctors, nurses describe Pitocin as it's oxytocin. It's like what's in your body, uh, but it's not. It's a lot different. So to understand Pitocin, I think you have to understand oxytocin. Oxytocin is this natural hormone in the body um, and it supports transition from labor to birth. It supports bonding and this mothering that we have. It supports breastfeeding and the affection that we feel towards our infants. It also helps us reduce stress and it also increases pain relief in the body. So what's the difference, right? What's the difference between syntocin, synthetic oxytocin, and pitocin uh, versus natural oxytocin that occurs in our body. Well, the biggest difference is they respond differently in our body. Pitocin is a continuous drip, 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 while oxytocin is metered and pulsed through our body. So we have this metering and pulsing effect, and we have a contraction, oxytocin pulses, it pulls back, the uh, response that pulls back cues endorphins in our body, which gives us pain relief, and then pulse again, we have another contraction, and we have this kind of metered response in our body with this uh, oxytocin cycle that naturally occurs. We don't have that with an oxytocin drip. It's just drip, drip, drip. And this often increases uh, what we call a hypertonic uterus or um, contractions just keep going one after the other. They're right on top of each other. And this can cause damage to um, the birthing mother, or the birthing parent, or the baby um, if these contractions are one on top of each other. And it can be more painful 
Um, so this is, this is, you know, something that we should be aware of. Also, Pitocin doesn't peak as oxytocin peaks. And what I mean by that is at a certain point in labor, that oxytocin in a, in a physiological natural birth will peak and then it will contribute to what's called the fetal ejection reflex, which is a natural reflex in the body that helps expel the baby. Um, so in theory, you have to work a little harder to push your baby out if you're uh, using Pitocin. And Pitocin can also interfere with that bonding and breastfeeding while oxytocin increases bonding and breastfeeding. So again, this is something that we need to be aware of as parents. So what are the dangers of Pitocin, right? So you can have trouble with breastfeeding. Uh, people who were given synthetic oxytocin during labor were three times less likely to initiate breastfeeding in the first four hours, meaning they needed more help breastfeeding. Um, and they were two times more likely to give formula by the time they were discharged from the hospital. So this is a big, a glaring statistic um, that that really shows an increase in trouble with breastfeeding when given Pitocin during labor. There's also other risks, right? There's risks of increased postpartum mood disorder, um, like postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. Uh, the risk is between 32 and 36% for people who were given Pitocin during labor. There's also a risk of postpartum hemorrhage. So you are three to, to six times more likely to have a postpartum hemorrhage if you were given Pitocin during labor. So again, another really big statistic. We should be aware of these things before we consent to taking oxytocin, synthetic oxytocin. Um, and what are the dangers for a baby, right? I often hear my clients, my doula clients say, like, I don't care what happens to me. I, I just want to make sure the baby's safe. So just, you can give me whatever drugs. But oftentimes we're not realizing that the drugs that are given to us go to our babies. So there are adverse effects for infants, right? Uh, infants who got um, Pitocin during birth were more likely to have NICU stays, they had lower APGAR scores, they had delayed motor development and a heightened risk for autism spectrum disorder. So um, that ASD risk that is is way increased with children who um, underwent inductions for their birth. And we don't know as a society, as a community, why we have so many kids who are on you know, who are autistic, who are on that autism spectrum, could Pitocin and induction be, you know, contributing factors to this autism epidemic that we are experiencing? I don't know, but again, it's something that we should definitely look into. So what's next? Now that we have all this information, what do we do, right? What do we do? I, as a student midwife, as a doula, I'm advocating that you have conversations with your care providers. Talk to your OB, talk to your midwife, um, tell them that you have concerns about Pitocin and, you know, tell them that you don't want it unless it's medically indicated. Nothing will change until consumers advocate for change in their birthing places, in their hospitals, in their birthing centers. Use Pitocin smart. Be smart about it. Um, as per the, the Pitocin package in for insert for the FDA, um, use it as needed, right? Use it on a case-by-case -case basis. Don't give it to everybody. Um, in all of the metro hospitals here in Oklahoma, Pitocin is used for third-stage management, which means that after you have your baby, they automatically give you Pitocin. Um, they don't wait to see if you hemorrhage, they just do it prophylactically and you can have all of these risks, this increased risk just from receiving Pitocin. So only use it if you're hemorrhaging, right? Um, if you're having a postpartum hemorrhage, it's a great drug. It's very effective for managing that bleed um, and that can save your life. Um, but I don't think it should be given to everybody, right? And then use it also for medically indicated induction. So if pregnancy is not safe to continue for either the parent or for the baby, then maybe it's time to do an induction and maybe try some Pitocin, but let's not just use it on everybody, you know? Again, uh, case by case care, uh, management that is unique and uh, not following protocols that are possibly dangerous, um, you know, giving everybody a medication that they could have uh, this interaction with. 
And then of course, here are my references. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment and I will get back to you. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and remember to thumbs up this video and definitely